Okay, in this one, what we're going to do is look at two things that look like polynomials. We'll discuss why they look like polynomials and then what we would have to actually do to start uh, writing down the equation. Now, first off, this looks like a polynomial. It can't be exponential because it's got bends. It can't be logarithmic, it can't be um, linear, it can't be quadratic because a quadratic only has one bend. It can't be trig either um, because it doesn't repeat. So the only thing that's actually left for us is a polynomial. Now, in order for us to write down an equation of a polynomial, if we're able to do it at all, we have to write it down in factored form. So I'm going to start writing down f of x. And I know that every time it has a 0 here, I have a corresponding factor. So for example, if 1 is a, is a 0 there, I know that x minus 1 has to be a factor. I know that 4 is a 0 there, so I'm going to get x minus 4, like that, has, has, has to be a factor. And I know that 7 is a 0, so that x minus 7 also has to be a factor. Now, the question is, is this right? Well, no. <laughs> right? If I multiply this all out, I would get an x cubed. Right? And this is clearly not um, a cubic. We know what cubics look like. Right? They either, they either go like this or they go like this. Um, what did I do wrong? Well, 4 is a double root. Uh, if 4 is a double root, the only way I can fix that is actually by doing that. Now, um, that's righter than the first one was, um, but it's still not correct. I mean, the reason being, if I multiply out the highest powers here, I'll see x to the fourth. We know what x to the fourth looks like. It comes down like this and then goes back up. This one does opposite of that if I were to zoom out. This one starts way down here, goes up and comes way back down. Um, and we saw yesterday what to do with that. We put a big fat minus out front. Yay! And we actually get something that actually graphs very much like this. Uh, you could just put that into Desmos and just see how close it is. It's not that bad. All right? Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. More complicated, but not any harder. <laughs> right? So this is just the second example of ungraphing a polynomial. And what do we want? We want a bunch of roots. How about if we have a root of two? Let's see here and. Uh, double root at zero, and a root at three, and how about a triple root at five, and then at seven, we'll just, see. Uh, well, no, we'll, we'll leave that alone. What do I want? I want something like this, and then down like this, and then up like this, and then down like this, and then like this, and I said a triple root at five, so it needs to go like that. Ta-da! All right, um, let's see, I'm gonna put a little zero here just so I remember everything. Now, um, the only way we're going to have of, graph of finding equations of polynomials without doing a, a ton of linear algebra, which we're not going to do in this class, um, we hope that what we have is the polynomial in factored form, right? and every time there's a zero here, we have a corresponding factor here. So that negative 2 here is a, is a root, so that x plus 2 must be a factor. We see that 0 is a root, so that x has to be a factor. We see that 3 is a root, so that x minus 3 has to be a factor. And we see that 5 is a root, so that x minus 5 has to be a factor as well. Now, could this be the right graph? Um, that's a really good question. Um, if I were to graph this, right, it wouldn't do anything like it did at 0. All, all, everything would just cut straight through like it does at 2 or it does at 3. Um, if I see a double root at 0, I'm supposed to put a double root there. Um, at 5, I see at least a triple root. By the way, I can't tell if that's a triple root or a quintuple root or a septuple root, but the smallest power I can put on there that makes it look like that is a 3. So they go like that. Now, um, that at least crosses through negative 2 the right way, 3 the right way, 0 the right way, and 5 the right way. Um, does it actually look like this? Well, let's check the end behavior. If I multiply up the highest powers of x all the way through here, I'm going to get x, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the seventh. We know what x to the seventh looks like. It's, a, it's an odd power function. It comes down from here, it goes up like this, and then up like this. Well, that's exactly what this function does. So this is going to be my guess. Um, the only other thing I could actually have to do in the long run would be actually try to find some points, but the only, we don't even have the points. So I'm going to live with this. Um, there's a your turn that's all like this, except with a much better starting graph.